Everyone, good afternoon. Okay, um, so I'm just going to uh, post actually right now. Uh, let me just post this here. Um, Good afternoon. Hey, hello. Uh, yes, and I will also post that. Okay, let me um, so let me add a file here. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to do here practice exam. All right, guys. So I posted the practice exam uh, just now. Um, yeah, sorry I didn't get to do it yesterday. Uh, so please take a look over it uh, tonight and tomorrow, and um, you should be able to do most of it by now. Um, it just has some Kramer's rule and stuff like that. Uh, um, and uh, uh, um, and some of the stuff with transformations. And uh, uh, sorry, guys, today I have to uh, babysit a little bit. So uh, I have a Samantha's right here hanging out. And uh, if she starts to cry, I'll just hold her a little bit. And then I might ask you guys to take over and maybe do some some problems on the on the whiteboard or something. Um, but so far, she's doing OK. Ah, no, no worries. Um, yeah, if you need a lot of extra time to finish up the homework, as a few students asked me for extra time, that, that's totally okay. Uh, just try to get in by maybe uh, the latest by Friday. Uh, okay, uh, so I wanna show you something really cool today uh, and hopefully we can um, uh, 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 show the, uh, let's see here, share. Uh, ho hopefully we can go back to one of the problems from yesterday and, and see another way of, see, uh, of understanding it. Okay, great. So, um, so I'm actually, yeah, I'm gonna write a new note. Uh oh, okay. Uh, so, okay, so here's, here's a question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a little time to think about it, then I'm going to go grab her. So, um, imagine that we have a triangle with, uh, with points, with three points. One point is at the origin, one point is at A comma B, and the other point is, um, uh, C comma D. Oops. Uh, I don't think uh, it likes that. We just erase this. So we have a third point over here. C comma D. And I'm going to draw a triangle here. 
the question I'm going to ask for you guys is try to figure out the area of this triangle. And it's a weird shape because it's kind of a tilted triangle. So I'll leave you a little bit of time to think about it. Um, and so draw this out and I'll give us a guy some time to think about it and uh, um, see what you come up with. So I'll give you guys a few minutes. I'm going to grab her. Uh, You can, you can message me any ideas that you might have. My only hint is see if you can break it up into simple shapes. And you guys are welcome to work together also. If someone um, wants to annotate or something, you're all welcome to do it. Okay, so what's our goal with this? Is it to? I'm pretty sure it's to find the area. Find the area of it? No, he just said to like how you would find it. And I sent him simple shapes, like smaller triangles that are easy to no, find the area. Of. Find oh, we do? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. <laughs> All right. If you guys want to work all, sorry, if you want to work all, to, all together, uh, share some ideas, that would be awesome. And I can kind of watch as you're writing and, and sharing thoughts. And so there, the goal is come up with a formula for the red triangle in terms of A, B, C, and D.
Okay, I think I figured out how to do this problem. I don't know if anyone wants to like know or not, but I would I love to know. Yes. Okay. So you use like share your screen. Okay, I I can't share. I don't know. You can make like your own image. You just like you share screen. You can do whiteboard. Okay, I'll try that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you use like the determinant determinants. So you're gonna do. I just made up random points for like A, B, and C, and D. So it'd be zero. Oh gosh, this looks so bad. Zero, one, and then it'd be one, one, that. And then I did one, two for A, B. And then I did three, four, four, C, D. And then I didn't really get that far. I got to like going to here. And then you. Why do you use one, two, three, four? Because those are the ones I chose. I, you could choose random points because it's just A, B, C, D. Uh, wait, then where do you get the one like at the end of it? Because that's Z. There's nothing for Z. It's a... Wait, would you have to do Z then? No, but like it, if you're using a determinant like this, like a three by three matrix, so you have to do it, I think. I don't know. I just looked it up online. <laughs> okay. And then so you do like the thing with like you like kind of cross. So it'd be zero, two, one, four, one, and that's wait, plus, minus, plus, this would be plus, even though this is basically gonna cancel out to zero anyway, minus zero, <laughs> oh my gosh, this looks so bad, zero, one, one, three, one. That doesn't look like a three, but plus one, one, two, three, four. So the only one we're really gonna be looking at, I think, I'm just like going along, I'm like reading the thing on the side. But so this would cancel out because it's zero. This would cancel out, so it's zero. So we really just have to look at this one. So I'm, I don't know if I'm doing it right, just letting you know, but it'd be like one and then it'd be like cross multiply. So it'd be four minus six. Oh no, that's not gonna be right. Wait, I don't think an area could be negative. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I think you do you three know, times two and then you subtract the four. Right? Two okay. So it'd be two then. So it'd be one, six minus four equals two. So I don't know if this is right, but it's a start. <laughs> it's an idea. <laughs> I think I think it makes sense. Yeah, hopefully. Hey, hey guys. Hi. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I just kind of uh, dropped her off for a little bit and let her cry. She's she had some shots today, so they said she's going to be like extra crying. And then my wife had to go to the doctor, so uh, she was napping, and now she's not so happy. Um, right, so, well, so that's uh, 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 is that from the test, the practice test? No, this is from what you like the warm up thing. And I thought this could be an idea to get find the area, but I don't know if I did it right. Oh, okay, yeah. How did how did you uh, think about that? that? That's pretty interesting. I used I like looked it up online because I was kind of confused, and they said determinants were a good idea to start. So I did okay. like the determinant process for it, and uh -huh. I ended up getting two for my area. And I don't know if that's like could be right. Okay, so okay, so so um, uh, that is correct. But it's a little bit hard to see uh, why this weird formula uh, has anything to do with the area. So okay. um, uh, let me add, can I add a page to this? Let me see here. Yeah, I don't really know how to work this. So if you need me to stop share, I could do that. Oh, oh this is a different share? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me do, let me share mine. Okay, I'll stop my share. But, but that's that's a good one. That, that's, uh, uh, if you want to save that, you can actually add it to the, uh, and send I can, I can share it as well. Um, let okay. me just share. Uh, the whiteboard. Oh, okay, cool. It's still, it's called, oh, yeah. So it's a little bit, um, so well, I'll give you, does anyone have a, uh, an idea how you can approach this without, you don't need any formula. All you need to know is how to find the area of a rectangle 
and how to find the area of a triangle. Does anyone see anything you can do? And I, I think somebody was kind of suggesting it. Um, can you like, from the point C, do you can you just like draw a straight line down and then you have one, like, we well, have two triangles, but then you can just do like an easy area formula, like the Pythagorean. Oh, no, don't, no Pythagorean theorem, easier than that. Just do uh, base times height. Because this is, when you drop a vertical down, you get the base and the height, right? So you can just do a bunch of uh, vertical right triangles, which are really easy to find the area of. Um, and then uh, you might have to do some addition and subtraction of area to get the actual, to get the actual thing that you want. Um, I lost my, oh, there it is, my pencil. Spotlight, eraser, draw. So uh, yeah, was that Allison who suggested this? This is a really good idea. So see if you can figure out how to you take advantage of just the fact that these are coordinates. So therefore you know that this is D and then this one would be C. And then see if you can figure out how to find the, can I change the color? Hmm, how do I change? I'm not sure if I, how to change the color on here. Oh yeah, format. Right. So yeah, how do you find the red triangle in terms of maybe some other triangles? Maybe a rectangle as well. Okay, I, uh, I'll be back. But uh, uh, and then we'll see uh, that the idea that will it will come out. the The big surprise was that it would turn out to be a determinant. But it's going to be simpler than the formula that you had. You'll you'll recognize the formula as soon as you see it. It's very related to the determinant. I feel like um, it's going to be like the beginning we'll, part we'll, where. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll just do this for about like maybe another uh, 10 minutes or so. And then after I'm thinking maybe uh, uh, we'll have you guys look at some of the um, uh, practice tests. That could be a good uh, use, use of the time today. But yeah, uh, yeah uh, keep, keep working on it. You guys are doing well. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, so the straight line thing for Emily, it's just like to drop so that it makes um, a triangle. So then like where it says the D and C, that's just like when you do like the Pythagorean theorem, it would just be like C squared plus D squared equals that other horizontal line that doesn't have anything on it. I don't really know where that would go, but I feel like with the determinant thing, it has to do something with the... Um, either that formula over a different one or like the slope and something like that.
So I see uh, it might not be a rectangle. There actually might it might be instead of, uh, you could do a rectangle, but it might be easier. It's actually a trapezoid. Um, and also feel free to draw in there, and you guys can kind of annot annotate. What do you guys have so far? Well, I see some good ideas. And you guys will have to take the reins on this one because it's a little bit harder for me to draw. Um, how do we draw on it? Oh, can you, are you not able to draw on it? I'm not sure if I just can on my computer or not. Or if it's someone else. Uh, view options. Um, you click on view options and there should be a button that says annotate. Right. Does it have it? Yeah, you has it. it. When you let go to you are viewing Dan Daniel Minsky's screen, it says okay. it on the right. It's near the green area. Mine doesn't have that. But like I know what you guys are talking about. I still have it on mine. Hmm. Yeah. And anyone uh, or Lily, what would you suggest to draw here? What were you thinking? Um, well, my original thought was like using the Pythagorean theorem, so it'd be c squared plus d squared equals whatever that other part of the line is. Uh huh. So and, you get the. Uh, the Archer said it was like we were going to use e as like the value for it. Okay. Just so. For... Um. So uh, uh, that would be that's that's a good idea, but that's a little bit heading on the wrong track. All you need, you don't need any Pythagorean theorem. Uh, all you need here is simple base times height. So let me give you, uh, does anyone have any other idea? So we don't need anything to, we don't need to know about the lengths because these, these lengths of this triangle, they're all kind of like, uh, nice, exactly. CD, nice Roger, CD over two is the big triangle over here. And AB over two is that one. So, you're on the right track. So, so Archer suggested a good idea. Let me draw here. Um, whiteboard, draw. So Archer suggested uh, uh, undo. Let me make it maybe color. Is you can look at uh, a few different shapes. Do you guys see three shapes? Yeah, so, so just as, it's basically just three shapes. To get the red area, you can do the, you can do the big, the, this, um, I'm gonna do a green, there's a green trapezoid. There's a blue, there's a blue triangle, a big blue triangle. Um, add those together and subtract, subtract the purple or the, subtract the, the let's say, uh, the, the purple triangle down here. So take away, take away that one, but add the blue and the green trapezoid. And that would leave you with the red area. Okay, so I'll leave you guys for a few minutes to try to do that. I'll, I'll hang out here because she's actually pretty calm. Um, and it's just, a, it's just like a fun exercise to try it out and see what, what numbers, what expression you get. And everything that uh, is there, um, if you remember how to find the area of a trapezoid, you might have to look that up, but it's, it's base one plus base two uh, times the height. It's like the average of the, of the uneven sides or of, of the parallel sides, it's the average of those times the height. Um, and then yeah, if, if anyone can annotate on there and we can start to see kind of what the formula looks like. Excellent. Okay, Archer. Very good. So let's let's. Uh, I'm gonna. Can someone? Uh, uh, well, I'll, I can write it here. So this will be CD 
divided by two. Um, what is, anyone can tell me what the area of the green one is? Good, so we're gonna add the green thing and at the end, we're gonna subtract a, B. Uh, actually, yeah, I guess it's fine. Yeah, so anyone have a formula for the, um, I realize I should have labeled A, B, C, D a little bit differently, for, but it's not a big deal. I should have switched them. So what is, what is the trapezoid? So this is a trapezoid, by the way, it's a trapezoid that's drawn like this. It's like standing upright. It's a weird one, right? But you can, if you look up at the form of the trapezoid, you can just do it, you can do it for a shape like this. This is, this is how we usually see trapezoids. So. Um, isn't it A plus B over two times the height? Uh, exactly. Uh, but in this case, the, we, we have to tilt our head uh, to see that, like the, the bases, are, are, are the vertical segments and the height is the horizontal segment. So if I, in, in this shape, what is, what is this, this uh, the, the, the short side on the right? What's this one? A minus C. Oh wait, A minus C. Oh, this would just be A minus C. Oh, A minus C is the is this part. That's right. A minus C is this guy. This is A minus C. I'm just I'm just recreating the green one. Like I'm just cutting it out and moving it down here so we can look. It's a little bit less cluttered. What's the what's the side on the right? What's this guy? That's just B. That's just B. And then this one is just the one on the left is D. D. And because it's flat right here, it's a 90 degree, A minus C is the height. So can you come up with a nice formula for the area of this trapezoid? Uh. And I'll 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 tilt I'll tilt it over and draw it over here. This might help. Um, is it b times d over two times a minus c? Yes, you got it. So it's going to be b plus d divided by two. There's another. There's other ways to do it. You can like cut it up, but if you know the form of a trapezoid, it's nice. So b plus d over two times a minus c. All right, please on a, your piece of paper, expand everything and do as much cancellation as you can and tell me what formula you end up with. And you guys can compare and, and make sure you did it right. You guys see her, her bandage, she got, it was like, looked pretty scary, the shot. Good, uh, like a, went through her whole leg basically, like a half an inch or so. So we're just gonna try to get a nice expression. Yeah. Uh, we just wanna get a nice expression for this this thing. By the way, uh, when I move my mouse on the whiteboard, can you guys see it? Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, cool. That's actually really, really nice. So let me know when somebody has the full thing simplified out. Maybe, let me see here, more. Show computer sound. Um. Okay, yeah, Emily, yeah, Emily, you could you actually it's a good observation. That that's that's a really good idea. You could multiply everything by two and just or factor out a one half on the outside of everything. Because there's a two, there's a there's a two here, two here, and two here. 
you can just take out the overall one half and we're going to see that that the, what where the one half is shows up and and and, and um, how we can think about getting rid of it. But yeah, that's an excellent idea. Um, th does everyone, by the way, have this picture down in, in there? Um, let me see, where can I? Just I'm running out of space here a little bit. Um, nice, nice, Archer. Uh, wait, does it, is, that, is that correct? Yes, nice. Archer is perfect. Did everyone, did anyone else get what, what Archer got? After you do all the algebra? I'll wait for a few more people. I just want to make sure that, because uh, this is something that's worth doing at least once, because you do the uh, determinant formula a lot, and it's worth doing this at least once on your own like actually doing the multiplication and seeing the picture just so that you really believe it. So I'll wait for a few more people to confirm that they also got it. Oh, okay, Confuse out a symbol. Just foil this out. So when you foil the, first take out the one half. That was a good idea. Uh, make everything a little bit simpler looking. So take out the one half from everything. And then, and then, uh, um, just you have a bunch of like uh, letters that are being multiplied. So you have CD, but what do you get when you foil this out? You get, it's not like a X foiling, but it's just, you have a bunch, everything has to multiply each other. So you have BA plus uh, DA. And I think I'm gonna erase here. Uh, let's draw B A C D plus B A plus D A. Um, why is it not letting me? No, no, that, oh, yeah, that doesn't matter. D A B C the, because it's just they just stand for numbers. So if you switch the order, uh, it doesn't. It's the same uh, um, number when you multiply. Okay, so CD plus, uh, we're doing BA, uh, DA, but then you got to distribute the B to the minus C. So it'd be minus CB and then minus DC. So that's the foiling. We have four terms. And then the last thing is minus AB. And I got rid of, there's no more one half because I just took it out of everything. So look at what happens. And now I'm going to do this in a different color in red, you're going to see some nice things cancel. Does everyone see that that this cancels with this? Then um, this CD cancels with this one. And look at the formula that we're left with, AD minus BC. Do you guys recognize that formula? This is one half times the formula that we have learned before. I'm going to rewrite it in the familiar way, AD minus BC. In particular, this is the amazing observation. If this is a vector, AB, and this is another vector, CD, now I'm thinking of this as vectors. And instead of a triangle, I don't ask you for the area of a triangle. I instead ask you for the area of the parallelogram that they make. So draw CD a little bit more that way and then connect it with another vector AB like that. If you remember, this was like kind of the thing that we, we, we drew a bunch of these parallelogram grids. The area of the grid, the area of one region of the grid is equal to twice this expression because this is, this is the area of the triangle. So this is the main idea that the area of the fundamental parallelogram, so anytime you have two vectors, they're going to make a parallelogram because you can kind of say, okay, go, go, uh, uh, go in one vector, go in the direction of one vector, step in the direction of the other vector, 
and then the the opposite point is like going along one vector and then adding the second vector you always can make this fundamental parallelogram that's going to be the building block for that grid that we saw many times before um so and so what the determinant represents is it represents the area of the fundamental parallelogram Um, so just to kind of show you, uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can share. Yeah, I'm going to share my, uh, do this now. I'm going to show you guys a really simple example. Okay. So um, let's look at, was this from yesterday? No, no, this is not from yesterday. Oh, okay. Let's look, just look, look at some of the things from yesterday. So the first one that we did, do you guys remember the first transformation that we did was um, a simple dilation. The, the very first one that we did, the first uh, transformation that we looked at was this one. Um, so three, three, zero, zero, three. To visualize what that does to the, to, this is our standard grid. It's just one, it's like one, 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 it's a, just a bunch of squares. If we dilate this grid, we transform the entire piece of paper by zooming in or you know, blowing it up by a factor of three, we turn the, the little square, the fundamental square or the original standard square, it gets turned into, a, it, got, it got transformed into this bigger square. That's what, because we saw, we, and what I mean by that is just, I keep track of the first column the first vector in the first column, that's this one. And uh, the second vector is this one. So this is a really straightforward one where each vector just got stretched out by a factor of three. What's the area of this three by three uh, fundamental square of the new grid? What's the area of this one? If it's three by three and it's just a square, it's just nine. And that is the same as the determinant of this matrix because you do three times three minus zero. So the determinant of a matrix represents the area of the parallelogram that the two columns make. That's, that's the incredible thing about the determinant. Let's look at another one. This one's kind of cool. We try to understand here 90 degree rotation, right? So originally this was the standard thing. E1, this is just a one by one, you know, you go up to the right, uh, everything is like interval length one, one by one square. This is the basic thing that we always have. And when we applied this matrix, a 90 degree rotation, we got, we got this matrix. We, we discovered that in order to express this as a matrix, we want the green one to go up, up here and we want the E2, the one that's pointing up, it now has to point to the left. Hopefully you can visualize that that just means the things, the uh, vectors got rotated 90 degrees. Now, the new fundamental parallelogram here is always kind of based off of what happens to, you know, uh, what the first column of the matrix is. The fundamental parallelogram of a matrix is based on the first, the, the, the parallel, parallelogram you get by looking at the first column and the second column. In other words, it's the parallelogram that you get by looking at those two vectors. And if you look at that, what shape do we have here? 
if we just rotated the original square 90 degrees, what shape does that transform to? It's just a square. What's the area of the new square? Has the area changed at all after we rotate? The area is still one. Let's explore this. Let's just check out the, what's the determinant of this expression? The determinant is, can anyone tell me the determinant of this matrix? The determinant here, if you do zero times zero, that's just zero, but then along this diagonal, you have to subtract. So it'll be negative one, but you've got to subtract it. So the determinant is just one. And that's not surprising because when we rotate the grid by 90 degrees, the fundamental square, the area of it doesn't change. So what the determinant is really useful for is understanding how much the area of your grid changes by. If you zoom, if you have a dilation type of transformation, if your transformation makes the grid like more spread out, then your determinant will be a, a, a big number. If your uh, transformation makes, if your new grid determined by these vectors is smaller than the original square, then your determinant will be less than one or a fraction. Um, can anyone tell me how could it happen that after you move the red and green arrow, the parallelogram that you get has no area? How could that happen? What do we have to do? So the question is, um, uh, so a matrix, one way to interpret, so this is the, the idea, the determinant of a matrix A, let's say A is equal to the matrix V1, V2. And I'm writing the, the vectors as columns, the vectors as columns of the matrix. What we just observed is that the determinant of A is equal to the area of the following of the, what we call the fundamental parallelogram. And so the way you find it is you draw V1, wherever it is, here's V1, and you draw V2. And do you guys see that anytime you have two arrows, if you make a lattice of them, like you say add integer copies of V1 and integer numbers of V2, you can get a, a nice grid of parallelograms. And the very first one that you get, the first parallelogram that you might draw is this one. You can keep going, right? Like if you do two V2, it's this thing with the grid that I was talking about before. But the idea is that the determinant of A is gonna be the area of one of these little, of one of these parallelograms. So my question is, my question is, what, how could you arrange V1 and V2? Like if you make V1 and V2 really, really big, your determinant is gonna be big as well, uh, possibly. Like if you make the parallelogram really, really big. Um, 
Can anyone think of a way to rearrange V1 and V2 so that the area turns into zero? What does that mean? Yeah, how could you use two, how can two vectors ever give you, and, and also we don't want the, the, we don't want the vectors to be zero themselves. So the vectors are have some at length. How can you put two arrows together nicely? Does everyone see that? If the two vectors point in the same line, then they don't make a grid because whenever you try to add multiple copies of one to the other, um, they don't like, they don't hop out like, the key thing about these vectors is they make a parallelogram. But if, they, if they're on the same direction, it's called a degenerate par parallel. They're just gonna be, the, the shape you make is just a straight line. So that's the idea. Whenever we see two vectors in the same direction, like let's say um, uh, two, five, and four, 10, the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. Because if you, if you do it out, you get 20 minus 20, that's gonna be zero. But you can see that the two vectors, do you guys, does everyone agree that two five points in the same direction as four 10? Hit them, hit yes, if you, if you see kind of what I'm talking about there. They're in the same ratio, exactly. And this is something to think about how this connects to that, that problem we talked in the very beginning when we did two equations, two unknowns. Um, uh, we talked about, oh, sometimes there's no solution uh, when the, the coefficients of the system uh, are in the same proportion. It's kind of impossible maybe to get to the solution because the lines would be parallel. So this is a completely different interpretation. What it's saying is that um, if, you're, if your system, if your transformation says move, think about what this, trans this is an interesting transformation, by the way. So imagine the transformation that's given by, described by this matrix. And this isn't, this is gonna be an example of a transformation that's not one of the, it's not a rotation or a reflection. It's, it's actually something called um, uh, a projection. So it's an interesting one. Um, so can, can you guys kind of visualize and, and, and maybe volunteer to describe what happens if I were to take E1, this is E1 and E2, right? And E1 gets moved, E1 gets moved uh, to 2, 5, because this is the first column, right? So E1 is over here. So E1 got moved from, let me do, I did it in colors last time. So this is E1 and this is uh, E2. So um, uh, E1 gets moved to 2, 5, which is over here. Let's say 2, 5. So this is going to be E1. And E2, or A, I'm going to write it here, uh, AE1. And then AE2 gets moved to 4, 10, which points all the way up here. Can you guys describe to me the transformation that would move the green arrow there and the red arrow there? Can you visualize what happens if you try to do that, but imagine there's like little screws on the, on the, on the X, Y grid. Like every point there's kind of like little hinges. And you can like, you can sort of stretch them vertically and horizontally, but you can also squeeze them together. Can you guys see what happens to this grid? What? What, what kind of visually, what sort of, I'll, 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 I need to share the video so you guys can see a better visualization. But imagine like E2 gets stretched, E1 also gets stretched. Yes, yes, exactly. That's a good observation. So one way to think about what happens here, kind of like that, the, you know the drying rack that I was talking about? What's happening here is that you have your grid, but you're, and there's hinges everywhere. What you're essentially doing 
is you're just folding your entire, you're stretching some stuff, but you're also folding the grid flat. So everybody, all the, the entire grid gets collapsed into, um, the entire grid gets collapsed into this one line. And so if you ever try to understand the following uh, matrix system, you know, uh, uh, let's say two, five, four, ten, and you want to understand, oh, I want to put an XY, I don't, uh, this is my system, and I want to put another vector, let's say, um, over here, uh, zero, seven. So zero, seven is right here, let's say, right? This is zero, seven. So can I ever pick a point in my, if my entire space gets collapsed to the, to the red and green line, there's never gonna be a point X, Y that goes from here to zero seven because there's no grid. There's, this is just the entire space got shrunk into a single line. So there's no solution of X, Y. If I pick a, a zero seven, instead of zero seven, I pick let's say uh, 615 then there's actually going to be an infinite number of choices of red and green arrows that would get me to, to some other point. So that would be the idea that, that for, for points, for, for target vectors, if you remember, I used to call this the target vector. This is kind of like where, what you want to end up at. Um, uh, this would be uh, impossible to reach, but if, it's, if the target vector is on your line, then there's actually an infinite number of ways to get there because you have a lot of freedom with the red and green uh, arrow that are in the same direction. So that's just some food for thought. Uh, yes, th definitely Thursday. So for, for Thursday, the plan will be to go over um, uh, uh, definitely uh, to go over the practice midterm. Um, okay, last thing that I want to show you guys. Um, so uh, uh, we talked about um, rotation by 90 degrees. Oh, our, our exam will be uh, on Monday. And we'll see, we'll see how the practice goes. If you feel like uh, on Thursday that you need some more time, uh, I'm open to that. But I think you guys will find, um, you know, it's, it's got Kramer's rule, which is just practice the formula. Um, it's got a little bit of the stuff with matrices, but it's, it's really like kind of just you know, for, to, to understand what the matrices is gonna be like a reflection or a rotation. Um, so it's, it's nothing too difficult. Uh, just keep track of what happens to E1 and E2 and give me the matrix. Um, and, and there'll be some elimination, which we had worked on last week. Um, oh, by the way, so, uh, 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 so I told you what a determinant of a two by two is. Does anyone wanna take a stab and based on this, try to kind of interpret what is the determinant of a three by three matrix mean? Any guesses? What the heck does this, what does this represent? This is a really incredible thing. And this is just a total guess. Like based, the fact that a two by two determinant gives you an area, what do you think a three by three determinant would give you? The perimeter? It, not the perimeter, the, the volume. So in three by three, you have to start thinking about three dimensions because this is, this is a vector in 3D space. Can you guys see and it's a little bit hard for me to draw it, but if I have a, three vectors in 3D space, do you guys see that you can make an extension of a, um, of a parallelogram called the parallel piped? So what you do is you kind of, ex you, you, you attach the same vectors, uh, integer copies of the vectors to each other. So like, you know, you add, I'm gonna, here's, here's a V1, V2, and V3, this is the columns, V1, V2, V3. And, um, uh, and then you can kind of keep, you can make instead of a 2D lattice, 
you can make a, a lattice of parallel of, of parallel pipettes. So it's like a crystal lattice. And I'm going to draw this here. That that goes there. Oh, that that the, the one behind it should have been dotted as well. This is this is like that. This is like that. This is like that. And then this one is like that. And I should probably erase this one here. This is this will be dotted because it's just it's just behind. It's not vis visible. Okay. So that's going to be some sort of. It's called a. It's a. The shape is name is a parallel pipette. It's just a 3D parallelogram. So each each face of it is a parallelogram. And this is called the fundamental. Instead of the fundamental parallelogram, it's called the fundamental parallel pipette. And what it does is it measures how much you change. Because the do you guys know the original. In the original three, in the original standard grid, everything is just one direction, one direction along the x-axis, one direction along the y-axis, and we have a z-axis that points straight up. So we have a unit cube, and what the determinant measures is how much did the volume of the unit cube get get changed by? By what factor do we need to multiply the unit cube by? How much more volume is there? And just to show you a really simple example. Look at this. Look at this uh, kind of matrix: uh, two, zero, zero, three, zero, 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 one. This is a matrix in three D space because it goes from three dimensions and it maps something else to three dimensions. We've only done two dimensions to two dimensions, but what this does is it turns the unit cube. So here's your your x, your y your y and your z directions, and you have your little cube in here. That's, you have your little cube. What it does, and E1, E2, E3 are, this is E1. Uh, the red one is E2. And now you have an E3, which is gonna be purple, which points up. So now you have to keep track of what happens to the three, to the green, red, and purple. And what it turns into is it turns into a slightly different rectangular box. The green one gets stretched by two. So the green one is a little bit longer now. The red one gets stretched by quite a bit. So the red one moves over there. And uh, uh, the purple one stays where it is. So you get that. So you get this, this uh, new uh, uh, 3D shape. And it's like you can, it's like a bunch of little uh, flat bricks. So instead of your, your, your unit cubes or your individual cubes that fill up 3D space became a bunch of flat bricks. And what's the, what's the volume of this brick? How do we find the volume of this brick? It's a really simple shape because everything is still 90 degrees. There's nothing like slanted or anything. What's the volume of this shape? If it's if it's um, let me write a, uh, write out the numbers. What is it? Uh, this is uh, length two. This is length three, and this is length one. The volume will be just six. And if you calculate the determinant of this matrix using that crazy formula, when you do the Candy Crush method, you'll see that the only thing that matters is the two. The other ones don't matter, and so you get two times three times one. So it's more interesting for obviously more complicated parallel pipettes, like the one I drew above. But it's just incredible that such a simple idea, like volume, uh, you can uh, generalize it and come up with a, a incredible formula um, uh, for any three vectors pointing in any direction. OK, uh, so that's, that's well, a good place to leave you guys. Uh, Please look over the practice, and then if you have any questions, also you're welcome to email me, or please also ask ask on the classroom as well. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Let's see here. Oh, she's a uh... yeah, she's out. <laughs> Her first time learning about determinants, and she passed out. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. You too, guys. Yeah.
Bye. Emily, did you have any questions? <laughs>